time. Yep. Now remember, Hoss, as soon as you set that deal with Turner, you wire us, and we'll wire you the bank draft right away. Oh, we've been through this three times. Well, our statistics show that it takes an average of four reminders for you. Besides, when you get a look at those big city women, you're liable to forget everything. Oh, brother, you're a wee mite jealous, ain't you? <laughs> Uh, Toby. I heard you was riding with me this trip, Hoss. How far are you going? All the way to Denver. Keep an eye on him for us, will you, Toby? Denver's a big city. Yeah, especially around the women folk there. <laughs> oh, speaking of ladies, maybe I better check my women passengers. See if they want to stretch their legs a bit. Uh, you got some ladies on this trip, Toby? Yeah, all the way from San Francisco. You uh, ladies like to stretch your legs a mite? Thank you, driver. It's a little cramped in there. <laughs> You'll enjoy a little walk. Fine. Son, you're gonna have to watch your language. Yeah, well, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I'll see you. Have a good trip, son. Yes, sir. Take it easy, Joe. Adam. Take care of yourself, brother. Hi, ladies. Time to roll. Come along, sister. Well. to Denver? Just so happens I am, too. Uh, my name's Hoss Cartwright. Hoss? Uh, no, ma'am, not horse. Hoss. H-O-S-S. -S. What a lovely name it is. I'm Sister Mary Kathleen, and this is Mother Veronica, my mother's superior. Howdy, ma'am. We're a nursing order. Mother Veronica has just come all the way from Europe, the order's headquarters, on an inspection trip. We came around the horn to visit the San Francisco house. And now we're going to Denver. Please, Sister Mary Kathleen, must you ramble so? I'm sorry, Mother Veronica. All Irish are afflicted with the running of the tongue. It's my greatest affliction. I pray about it all the time. Yes. And now I think it is time for meditation. Perhaps it will help your affliction. Yes, Mother. Key ah! ladies, pardon me. I think I'll go up and meditate with old Toby a while. Mother in heaven. I felt for sure he would fall. He's a giant of a man. My Uncle Mordecai was like that. Your Uncle Mordecai. This preoccupation with the exploits and deeds of this worldly uncle of yours is a weakness with you, sister, among others. You may do well to use the time to think on them. Aye, but for sure he was a legend in Boston.
I'll tell you that. That Toby's the hardest than I ever tried to meditate with. Just put your luggage back there in your room, unless you want to keep your purses here with you. <laughs> purses? Those are our medical bags. We're a nesting order, don't you remember? Uh, put everything in there, please. Yes, ma'am. The range of toxins that's hard for anyone to remember anything you have said. Ladies, I'll round up old Sam and get us some grub put together. Be back in just a minute. Grub? What is this scrub? Oh, it means food. It's a Western expression I learned. You learn many things rapidly, sister. Too bad they're not always the right things. I have a question about this uh, uh, grub, Mr. Hostler. Uh, Sam's the name, miss. Just call me Sam. Oh, uh, Mr. Sam, what kind of condiments did you use? Uh, condiment? Uh, seasonings, like salt. Oh, oh yes. Uh, salt, pepper, onions, things like that. And time? Did you use time? Shucks, no. I whipped this stuff in a half hour. No, no, Sam, that ain't what well, you I meant. Well, I did. Yeah, no, but, but time is a seasoning like salt. Oh, some of that stuff. Yeah. This dish is like the uh, peasant food in Europe. Well, uh, I'm sorry you didn't like it. Oh, I didn't say that. My parents were peasant farmers. I was brought up on food like this. It made me nostalgic. Dishes will be taken care of. I'm sure you have other chores to perform. Oh, well, you don't have to worry about that, ma'am. Oh, it is woman's work now. Don't concern yourself. I sure wish we had more women travelers like you, sister. Come on, Toby. Help me feed the stone. Sure. Sister? But, ma'am, ain't you gonna help her? The sister's perfectly able of doing them herself. Oh, oh no, thank you, Haas. But, ma'am, I want to help you. Uh, no, please. I, I prefer to do it alone. But, ma'am... Whatever you say, ma'am. There's a certain violent beauty about this country of yours, Mr. Cartwright. Something bothering you about us, Mr. Cartwright? Yes, sir, Mary Evans. That little Sister Mary Kathleen in there. Uh, what about Sister Mary Kathleen? She's such a little slip of a gal to be in there doing all that work alone, like she was some sort of a servant or something. But she is a servant of God. And as such, she has to learn humility and acceptance. It is my duty to teach her that. Why? Because she's a postulant in our order. Do you know what that means, Mr. Cartwright? Some sort of a beginner? Sister Mary Kathleen is a beginner. And as a beginner, she will have time to judge herself and to be judged whether she's worthy of taking the final vows of poverty, chastity, obedience, and becoming a nun. Well, in that time, what if she decides she wants to go back to... Uh, the worldly life? Oh, but of course. If she has any doubt in her mind, we would want her to do that. And if she decides to stay? Then she will serve her novitiate at the Denver Mission if the order judges her worthy. Who in that order makes that decision? Several people, Mr. Cartwright, including myself. Well, I hope she gets what she wants. And I, Mr. Cartwright, hope she gets what she's worthy of. Good night, Mr. Cartwright. Night, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Sam, take it easy. Safe journey. Toby, go ahead. Sam. 
Looks like it's going to be another hot one. I uh, suppose so, Hoss. You two ladies get out on the floor and stay there. Oh, where are you going? I'm going up to help Toby. Far enough. What's with him? He's dead. It's too bad, but he shouldn't have tried to run. Where are the women? There was women on the stage. Well, maybe we ain't gonna come out so dry after all. This stage carrying anything valuable? I don't know. I'm just a passenger. Come on, Wilson. Let's look through the rest of the stuff. What's happened? Well, the stage hit a chug hole. Oh, my medical bag, please. Cut. I hope there's no concussion. 
Where you people live? I'm from near Virginia City. You, sister? Oh, I'm from Boston. The other one, where's she from? Well, by all the questions, what do you want anyhow? Well, now, we, uh, we was hoping we'd find something worthwhile on the stage, but they ain't carrying nothing we can use. We figured that uh, maybe you'd be carrying something, like uh, money, huh? Got a couple hundred dollars, that's all. That's yeah, better than nothing. You, sister, how much you got? They don't have nothing to do with money. Seems to me it takes money, come all the way from Boston. How'd you pay for the tickets and such to come way out here? Mother, Mother Veronica handled all the... So she handled the money, huh? Move away from her. Don't you touch her. We don't want to hurt you, so don't give us the choice. Move away. You ain't got no choice. I said we don't want to hurt nobody. Now move away. Wait. I'll get it. But you look away now. Here. Thanks. I'll always remember you and the uh, other one. Let's go. Oh, the money. You gave him the money. How much was in there? I don't know, but it's hardly important. Mother Veronica is. into the stage. You had a nasty blow on your head. You take it easy. Where's the driver? He, uh, <clears throat> he was killed in the accident. Poor man. May God accept his soul. And those men that were following us? They've gone. What did they want? They were, they were bandits. They, took what money we had and left. My money belt. Where is it? Well, they took it. They took it? But how could they? How would they even know? Well, I'm sorry, Mother Veronica, but I gave it to them. Mother Veronica, it wasn't her fault. They would have taken the money anyway and perhaps even have harmed you doing it. And how did they know I had it? Well, they tricked me. They tricked you. Do you know what that money was for? It was money for a hospital, for our mission in Denver. Mother Veronica, how much money was in that belt? Ten thousand dollars. And now it's gone. The hospital, gone. My mission a failure. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You're sorry, sister, for what? The suffering and death that will occur because of no hospital. Mother, please. Oh, spare me, sister. It reveals your lack of strength. I would have died rather than give up that money. The hospital.
Well, we should be reaching another way station by sometime tomorrow, anyhow, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Hey, uh, how about some more rabbit? No, I shouldn't. Why, sure you should. You got a long, hard day today. Do you really think so? Sure you should. Here. You know, anything will taste good when you're hungry enough. I know. Except for the last few years, I, I think I've always been hungry. How's that? Well, I came over from Ireland with my parents to escape the famine. So many other Irish did the same thing, that jobs and food were scarce in Boston. Well, you must have had a pretty rough life. I'm sorry. Oh, it was hard for thousands. I don't know what we would have done except for the church and the nuns. They fed you? Oh, they did more than that. They fed our souls, too. They made us feel that God had not forgotten us. I think that was when I decided I, I wanted to be a nun. Long ago, when I was a child. What's them three things that Mother Veronica said you was going to have to live by? Oh, poverty, chastity, and obedience. Poverty, I know. Chastity, I have. It's obedience that I can't seem to conquer. Yeah, I know what you mean. You know, my Paul never thought me and my brother was going to ever learn it. <laughs> oh, you have a big family. Well, hell, I got my Paul and two brothers, Adam and little Joe. You saw them when we got there at the stagecoach. <sighs> Your family's all men? Yes, sir, all men. Oh, well, you poor souls. Who cooks for you and takes care of you? Well, we got hop saying. We got a good life. Ranch is big, peaceful. We got food and comfort. And on top of all that, we got each other. Oh, that sounds like heaven. Food and, and space to breathe in it. And a family. Mother Veronica's right. My thoughts are worldly, and I enjoy them. She is right, though. I, I am stupid and weak. I don't like you are. Thank you, Horace. But you won't be judging me. Mother Veronica will. Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Ma'am, I'd, I'd like to talk to you for a minute, if I could. What about Mr. Cartwright? Well, first of all, ma'am, my, my name's just plain horse. You know, I feel like I used to when my little brother would get in trouble and I'd have to go to my pole for him. To plead for understanding? Like you come to me now for Mary Kathleen? Yes, ma'am. And what do you plead for her, Mr. Cartwright? Well, ma'am, she's so young. But she's old enough to have strength and weakness. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes a body wants something so bad that, well, they make a lot of mistakes just trying too hard. Wanting something very much does not always make it the thing you should have. That is the purpose of the novitiate, Mr. Cartwright. To separate those who truly want to be called from those who are truly called. If I seem harsh with her, I'm only trying to help. Mr. Cartwright, 
It is not a disgrace to leave the order or be refused by it. Many have faced it. And many have done more good for the world by becoming good wives and mothers than they ever would have as nuns. bunch of relay horses out here for the next stage. Maybe they abandoned this particular station. No, ma'am, they wouldn't have done that. It's too far between stations like it is. Come on, let's check. Hmm, huh, what do you know about that? The hostler took the horses to Owl's Point to report a stage that didn't arrive. That's us. When will he return? Says here he'll be back the day before the next stage arrives on Saturday. That's three days. What should we do? Well, we'll stay here. There's fresh water at least here and maybe some grub. Let's go in and check. Hey, we're in luck. There's dried beans and jerky in there. Jerky? Now, what is this? Oh, jerky is a kind of a dried beef. It's it's awful tough, but it's tasty and nourishing. Sure, and you have strange names of food out here. <laughs> Grub and jerky. Oh. oh. What was that? Sounded like a mom. Sounded like King in this room. <laughs> Who is it? The hostler? No, ma'am, it ain't. Do you know him? Who is it? Oh. He's the man who robbed us. Oh. Where's the money? He's out from the wound. Looks like he and that partner of his must have gotten an argument over the money. And he lost. Get some water. Oh. I'll get the medical bags. Do as I say, get some water. Wait a minute. I saw some in the other room. I'll get it. No, please. Search him for the money. There ain't nothing here except that empty gun belt. Looks like that partner of his took everything he had. But then he must know where the money is. A man that partner of his is long gone with it. But we won't know until he tells us. That's right. Oh. Very well. Is the money? Well, so don't, don't shoot. You can have the money. Don't shoot. He's delirious, ma'am. That wound. That bullet's still in there. If I can get the fever down, he'll be coherent. Ma'am, that bullet can still kill him. I'll get my bag. He's not going to die. And he will tell me where the money is. How is he? Oh, he seems to be breathing easier. Cleaning the wound probably helps stop the infection and reduce the fever. Not conscious yet, though, huh? No, not yet. How's Mother Veronica? She finally dropped off to sleep out there in that big chair. Oh, she needs a rest. She was in here most of the night, you know. Hey, you got a pot of coffee going out there. Won't you go out and get a cup? I'll stay in here and keep an eye on it. Thanks. I will. Do you make good coffee, Hoss? Ma'am, that's one thing a bachelor learns to do right. I bet you drink too much of it, then. 
You should get yourself a good wife who can cook. Aim to do just that one of these days. <laughs> Ma'am, wait a minute. How do you feel? Froggy. Where... Where am I? You're in a way station. I remember. I didn't think I'd make it. Did you take the bullet out? No. You're... That's right. We're the folks you robbed. I told you to call me. I was just about to call you. I said immediately, not one minute, three minutes after he regained consciousness. Obedience, sister, obedience. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother Veron. You're better. Now, where is the money? I ain't got the money. I find it difficult to believe a man like you. Honest. I had a fight with my partner. He shot me. Took the money and left. How do we know you were telling the truth? Did you find the money on me, sister? Ma'am, I think he's telling the truth. He's lying. Come with me, sister. I'm afraid you're in a heap of trouble. You mean you're going to turn me over to law? If you live long enough. What do you mean by that? Still got that bullet in you. And if we don't get it out, you're gonna die. And that pretty much depends on them. Them nuns? What they got to do with that? Well, they're also nurses. They got medical bags with the right kind of instruments to get that bullet out with. Then get them in here. You forget. You robbed them. And you do it, mister. Oh. I wouldn't know how, even if I had the right tools. I could even kill you trying. Your only chance is with them. And you make them do it, mister. No matter what I've done. I'll try. What are you going to do about him, ma'am? I have already done something about him, Mr. Cartwright. That bullet. It's got to come out of there, ma'am. He might die otherwise. Indeed, he might. And he might die if I tried to take it out. He's got a better chance with it out. I have done everything I can for him. All right. But I still say it's mighty risky business. I wouldn't risk his life, Mr. Cartwright. Despite what he is, what he has done. But I think it is better to wait for a doctor and proper facilities. I think his condition is much better than he pretends. And he's lying about how he feels, just as he is lying about the money. I'm not. I swear it. You, you've got to help me. Please. please. opened his wound. Would you get my medical bag, please? What are you going to do? I think Haas is right. The bullet has to come out. You trust his opinion rather than mine? Years ago, my Uncle Mordecai came home from a fight. Well, I took a bullet out of him. Your Uncle Mordecai. I told you I think this man is pretending. But if I think I can remove the bullet... Then you will disobey me? You've told me I must be strong. 
Well, I'm trying to be. I think I can help this man. Is there anything I can do to help? You'll have to hold him. We've nothing to give him for the pain. You know, sister, Mother Veronica could be right. Maybe he could make it till we could get him to a doctor. And maybe he couldn't. Thank you, horse. But I must do what I have to do. First, let's get the bandage off. Over, sister, I'll take over. It's all right, child. Will you be able to help me? Oh, yes, of course. And let's get to work. And let's hope he has a little for your Uncle Mordecai in him. How is he? Oh, his fever's down. I think he'll be all right. Then. And you think we've done right by taking the bullet out, huh? Only because Mother Veronica stepped in when I failed. Yeah. Must have been pretty hard for her to save the life of a man that cost her that hospital. I know. That hospital was to be the climax of her life. It was important, but I don't think she thought it more important than him. Well, as soon as that stage comes, we'll get him into a sheriff and get the truth out of him. She may have that hospital yet. Oh, I hope so. If only for Mother Veronica's sake. How is she? Still asleep out there in a big chair. Poor Mother Veronica. She's had so many disappointments. First the money and, and now me. Yeah. What, uh, what do you think she'll do about you and me? Oh, she'll do what she has to do. I disobeyed. It's obedience I... I can't seem to conquer. You know, Mother Veronica told me that a lot of girls didn't make it. But that didn't keep them from leading useful lives as wives and mothers. But I, I don't know what else I'd do. I've always wanted to be a nun, ever since I can remember. Yeah, look, ma'am, I imagine you're pretty tired. Why don't, why don't you lay down over there on that bed and try to get some sleep? I'll try. Francisco, would you come by the ranch and say hello? Oh, that'd be nice. I'd like to meet your family and see your aunt. What do you call it? The Ponderosa. Oh, that's a lovely name. The Ponderosa. Oh, wouldn't your father and your brothers mind me invading your bachelor kingdom? Certainly not. They'd be proud to have you. And if, if you do leave the order... Oh, Hoss. Pray that that doesn't happen. I'll pray for whatever makes you happy, ma'am.
Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! Stay right where you are. I didn't die after all, sister. Then you were lying. Only a little. My partner really did shoot me, take off for the money. But I got the last shot, and I aim better. Where have you had that money? He buried it by the corral. For this much money, a man will do anything, bullet in him or not. With a bullet out, I got a real chance now. So get out of my way. Don't, big man. Last time, you only got your head cracked. This time, you'll die. Foolish child. What are you hurt? It's my chest. The, the horse's hooves. I'll get my bag, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, no. No, hold me, Mother. I... Why did you do it? Why did you do such a foolish thing? I had to. For it was a question of strength. Was it not? Yes, my child. And I was strong, wasn't I? Yes, sister. You were strong. I'm sorry. I, I won't get to see your father and, and your brother's horse. Uh, and that peaceful ranch. The... The Ponderosa. Why, such a lovely name, the Ponderosa. We make it a fine hospital, Mother. And say a prayer for me. I showed the hostler how to change the bandage. He should be able to travel by the time the next coach arrives. I'll see to it that he's delivered to the sheriff, ma'am. These medical bags, I figured you'd probably want them down with you instead of up on the top. Oh, yes, thank you. Would you like to keep Sister Mary Catherine's? Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, would Sister Mary Kathleen have been accepted into the order? No, I don't think she would have. I'm sorry. Ma'am, she got the money back for the hospital. She had to be strong to do that. Oh, she did a strong and magnificent thing. But in her case, that wasn't only a question of strength. She could have never rejected the world she loved so much. Your world suffered a greater loss than ours. Yes. May God always be with you, us. Thank you, ma'am. And now we must go on.
time for meditation. Perhaps it will help your friction. Yes, madam. If you ladies will pardon me, I think I'll go up and meditate with Otobi a while. Mother in heaven, I felt for sure he would fall. He's a giant of a man. My Uncle Mordecai was like that. Your Uncle Mordecai. This preoccupation with the exploits and deeds of this worldly uncle of yours is a weakness with you, sister, among others. You may do well to use the time to think on them. Aye, but for sure he was a legend in Boston. Toby's the hardest than I ever tried to meditate with. Just put your luggage back there in your room, unless you want to keep your purses here with you. <laughs> purses? Those are our medical bags. We're in a nesting order, don't you remember? Uh, put everything in there, please. Yes, ma'am. The rate you talk, sister, it's hard for anyone to remember anything you have said. Ladies, I'll round up old Sam and get us some grub put together. Be back in just a minute. Grub? What is this scrub? Oh, it means food. It's a Western expression I learned. You learn many things rapidly, sister. Too bad they're not always the right things. I have a question about this uh, uh, grub, Mr. Hostler. Uh, Sam's the name, miss. Just call me Sam. Oh, uh, Mr. Sam, what kind of condiments did you use? Uh, condiment? Uh, seasonings, like salt. Oh, oh yes. Uh, salt, pepper, onions, things like that. And time. Did you use time? Shucks, no. I whipped this stuff in a half hour. No, no, Sam, that ain't what well, you meant. Well, I did. Yeah, no. you set that deal with Turner, you wire us. And we'll wire you the bank draft right away. Paul, we've been through this three times. Well, our statistics show that it takes an average of four reminders for you. Besides, when you get a look at those big city women, you're liable to forget everything. Oh, brother, you're a wee mite jealous, ain't you? <laughs> oh. Hi, Toby. I heard you was riding with me this trip, horse. How far are you going? All the way to Denver. Keep an eye on them for us, will you, Toby? Denver's a big city. Yeah, especially around the women folk there. <laughs> oh, speaking of ladies, maybe I better check my women passengers. See if they want to stretch their legs a bit. Hey, got some ladies on this trip, Toby? Yeah, all the way from San Francisco. You uh, ladies like to stretch your legs a mite? Thank you, driver. It's a little cramped in there. <laughs> we'll enjoy a little walk. Fine. Son, you're gonna have to watch your language. Yeah, well, oh, Paul. Paul, <laughs> oh, see you. Have a good trip, son. Yes, sir. Take it easy, Joe. Adam. <laughs> <laughs> 
Take care of yourself, brother. Hi, right, ladies. Time to roll. Come along, sister. Well. to Denver? Just so happens I am, too. Uh, my name's Horse Cartwright. Horse? Uh, no, ma'am, not horse. Horse. H-O-S-S. What a lovely name it is. I'm Sister Mary Kathleen, and this is Mother Veronica, my mother's superior. Howdy, ma'am. We're a nursing order. Mother Veronica has just come all the way from Europe, the order's headquarters, on an inspection trip. We came around the horn to visit the San Francisco house. And now we're going to Denver. Please, Sister Mary Kathleen, must you ramble so? I'm sorry, Mother Veronica. All Irish are afflicted with the running of the tongue. It's my greatest affliction. I pray about it all the time. Yes. And now I think it is... 